Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to get to the bottom of what's happening with my gooseneck trailer. I shared in a video about a week ago that it was trying to throw me off the road just pulling it, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Took it to one tire shop, and they didn't come up with anything, and then I posted a short explaining that I think it's a really simple problem, and everyone in the comments was arguing that that's not what's wrong with it. So today we're gonna dial down exactly what's wrong, hopefully get it fixed and be back in business. So let's get started. All right, so this is the trailer you guys see me using all the time. I've had several people actually ask me like what brand of trailer it is and I'm not real excited to tell them because I think it's an okay trailer but it's not a great trailer that I would go out of my way to recommend to you. It's great for the tractor pushing it to haul my skid loader on it. But the problem I'm having, the only problem I've really had with it is continuous problems with tires and the wheels. So I'm still running on the front the stock tires that came with the trailer and they're bald. The back tires were bald also. It's time to get four new tires. Well, I was getting ready to do that and I had a flat on one side and I took it into a tire shop. They said we, we couldn't get the nuts off of it. It was... Our impact wouldn't turn them off. By the time we got them off, it damaged the threads. We had to put all new studs in it. And it was a big mess. And they just did that tire repair. That flat repair. So I, about a month later, I said, okay, I'm going to go get four new tires. And I kind of forgot about that issue with those, those wheel studs. I thought, well, maybe it was just that one. I don't know what happened. So I went over to a different tire shop, said, I need four new tires. And they had the exact same problem. They couldn't get this first one off, and they fought with it, and I watched the whole thing. They were doing it outside. I stood there and just watched them, and it turned into a huge mess. They cut about half of the studs off. They couldn't get some of the nuts off. They said they didn't have the time or ability to put new studs in it. They said, we're going to try our best just to get a wheel back on this for you. And they did that with two new tires. The one that already had new studs was easy. They just put a new tire on it. And then the other one they put a new tire on. And I drove home and didn't notice too much. The next time I went to use my trailer, when I'm driving, I'm hauling the tractor, I'm getting this shaking. And I was going to that expo. And the more I went and the more I did, the worse it got. And when I was hauling it empty, it was about to pull me off the road. And obviously I stopped to check it out. I jacked the trailer up in the air one side at a time and I spun the wheels and I was watching for movement this way. And I was, I looked under it for everything. I listened for like a wheel bearing squeaking or something. I was looking for broken welds. I was looking for springs that were broke or anything. I thought something is broken because the trailer was doing this like sideways. I mean, it was bad. And so I took it back to a tire shop. I said, this trailer's shaking all over the place. I've got two new tires. I don't know what's going on. Can you check it out? And they said they took all the wheels off, didn't find anything, um, except one tire was out of balance back there. So I said, all right, I need some professional help here. And I came to this guy who found a problem that I feel dumb now, like I should have found it myself. But I'll let you tell him a little bit what what you had to do to this and what you found and then we'll actually show them too okay so what i did was jack up the back end of the trailer to get all four tires off the ground so i just went through all of them i made sure all the bearing play was good all of them checked out fine uh the only issue that i seen was just the studs on that one side that they cut off and some of the lug nuts were missing so i wanted to fix that issue before i continued so i got that fixed and it still didn't change anything so I went to the front tires, which are the originals, and are only 10 ply. They actually have, uh, they're out of round on both sides. This I'm assuming the skid steer is probably heavier than what the weight rating of the trailer. Well, the trailer's probably rated for what it is, but the tires are not. The tires are underrated for what it should be. Or it's, and if you look at the numbers, it's exactly at the limit, which isn't where yeah. you want to live all the time. Yeah. And um, these, I've talked about this before. My experience, I had five trailers last year and I've pared that way down. But every single one of them came with a tire that I would call 
either inadequate or absolute bare minimum. And that's the case here. For a 14,000 pound trailer, I should have 14 ply tires. It's, I mean, this trailer costs $10,000. It's rated to haul 14,000 pounds. That's it. That 10 ply is not really good enough, is it? No. My trailer's just a thousand pounds more than what his is, and mine's got 14 ply tires on it. So yeah. I think overrating your tires is probably the safest bet to keep things on the road. Now, I posted a clip of this already. What we're about to show you that the tire is wobbling, it's like egg shaped. And that video, that little clip, got a couple thousand views per platform, so probably five to ten thousand total views. And everyone was telling me that's not a bad tire. You've got a bent rim or different things like that. So you were kind of telling me that the bands in it can break. And once those bands break, it no longer holds its shape and it becomes egg shaped. Exactly. And, and that's what's happened. The skid steer, I'm assuming it'd be the skid steer because it's the heaviest thing you've had. It's broken the, it, there's like cables in that tire and it's broken the cables and that the air is pushing the rubber out and it's making it egg shaped. So I'm going to go get some tires. I'm going to show you what this wobble looks like. We're going to go get some new tires and find out if that actually fixes the problem. This is Austin who lives I don't know, less than a quarter mile from me. I think from the back corner of his property, you can see my house. And he has just started a fabricating metalwork business, mainly helping farmers with, you know, metalworking needs they have on their property. You know, at, modifying trailers, putting a bed on a trailer, grill guards, fencing, any kind of custom metalwork. And he's also started a YouTube channel. He's just posted a couple videos and has 13 subscribers. So I'd love it if you guys went over, if you have any interest at all in that type of work, go over and check out what he's got going on. I'd like to see his number be 200 by the end of the day. He also recorded a video about replacing the studs and, and the things he found wrong on my wheels and he's gonna have that posted. So I'll put a link to his channel and to the video where he fixed that. So right now I need to go get some new tires, but first I want to take a little tour around his workshop here. So personally, I find what this young man's doing to be very impressive. How old are you? 27. 27 years old, and him and his father and grandfather are, have been farming for a long time, and they still bale my hay. They've been in a couple videos already doing that, but what I find so impressive is that this guy just quit his job to start this fabrication business, and he's got, what, what, what kind of lift is that? That's a 12,000 pound two post rotary lift. Look at this shop. He just had this whole thing built. And you said you're already got people waiting on work? Oh yeah, I'm probably booked out a month and a half, two months with more jobs coming in. Fantastic. There's nothing I love more than a small business. And seeing a guy at 27, I wish I was doing that at 27. I'm sure you guys have heard the saying, the short version is like, you become who you hang around, and if you hang around five idiots, you'll be the sixth. <laughs> My philosophy is, surround yourself with as many smart people who know how to get things done as possible. So, Austin and I are gonna become good friends. But, right now I need to go get that tire fixed. The two back tires that are closest to the camera are brand new and the front tires are the ones that have the issue.
empty trailer trying to jerk me off the road. Luckily, we only have a really short trip to the nearest tire shop. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can get a look out the window and be able to tell if I'm exaggerating my death wobble or not. All right, well, we've got the bead broke here. One of the things I like to do is just, I want to give it a little bit of lube around the uh, bead here. It just honestly it helps the uh, tire machine not work so hard. We're going to be replacing this tire, so it doesn't matter much. But if I was taking this off for a flat and want to be putting it back on, you don't want to uh, have the bead come up here and get hooked and cut. So just a little bit of lube goes a long way. Helps it come, come right off. Cut up here. It comes up just to here. Shouldn't scratch the tire. We'll, um, come over here and we'll grab this. Push that down, throw it over, give her a spin. You got a tire machine, it sure works easy. Well, you look like you've done that before. Second bead, I don't worry about as much because the tire just honestly rolls off a whole lot easier. Your top one can easily be cut. Get my arm. Yeah. Just take a look inside here on the casing. See if there's anything that shows its ugly head. Uh, the last tire we did didn't show up anything. This one, taking a good look around. The casing still looks usable. Um, for being as out around as it was, it uh, you would think you'd find something in there, but that isn't always the case. But it was clearly, we spun it out there and it was doing the, doing the hop. So we're going to get this replaced. 10 ply polyester. Definitely um, a entry level tire. The quality and construction was designed to be cheap, cheap, cheap. So it got the job done. I think that trailer appeared as the cheapest tire, cheapest trailer money could buy at the time. Yep. Here's how you save costs, kids. It's real simple. Um, lighter weight axles, lighter weight angle iron, lighter weight tires. So we're going to be taking this off, putting on a, uh, a tank of a tire, and we're going to be able to get you going down the road hauling your uh, skid steer much safer. A little bit of peace of mind for that price of the tire. So this is a big key for me. Whenever I go in and I say I want a 10 ply, a 12 ply, a 14 ply tire, what I'm starting to pay more and more attention is what those plies are. He pointed these out. The tires I bought last week, obviously the trailer has four tires. The two brand new ones on the back are 12 ply tires, but those aren't steel plies. They're polyester and they're oh, nylon and cool. everything else. And this is 14 steel ply. 100%. If you're hauling a 10,000 pound machine, that's the tire you want. I'm learning my lesson. And when I buy a trailer, you look at the price of the trailer and it says this is a $10,000 trailer. Just call it 10,500 if it's got these or 10,800 if it's got these on it. Because you're going to buy $800 worth of tires to really haul what it says it will. That's a fact. All right. So this is the new tire. I'm leaning on that. And here's the old tire. That's, I mean, it was probably weaker when it was new, but that has got to have broken bands in it. There's no, no reason that should be that soft. And this is that strong. This is like an 81 pound tire. This thing is, yeah, wow. I want to lift it, that's for sure. The things you definitely want to do when you're putting on a new tire, whether it's tractor tire or skid steer tire, or car tire, it really doesn't matter. Lubrication is your friend. If you don't put it on here, get it on here good and proper, you will cut it, 
cut the deed going on just the smallest of cut down here will cause a, uh, a blowout injury or it'll uh, get a big bubble here. Even if you you do all the cautions right, occasionally you know, you'll hook it on a tire machine, cut the bead. I've had to buy a few tires just because, you know, life happens. But we're going to put this tire paste on and we shouldn't have any troubles today, even though this is a good 14 fly tire. My arm in place, lock down, over and under, a little belly spin. Just like that, be one drop down. Let's have a... Um, Something Brock didn't know about, and we do on about as probably 85% of our tires, is balancing beads. Um, there's a lot of uh, school of thought out here. We buy them in bulk. This is typically how we, we put most of them in. It's just uh, glass silica beads is all it is. Uh, you can buy them in um, pre-made bags, which works just as fine too. That's an eight ounce bag. We like Impact. I got a good supplier for them. I think they work amazing. They work off a centrifugal force. With it goes to with the heavier light side of the tire. I always get it confused, but the beads will sling to one side with a centrifugal force, and then it also uses static electricity to put the beads throughout the tire as well. So take the old uh, take a balloon and you rub it on the side of your head and it sticks. That static electricity, it's the same principle here with these balancing beads. For our bigger truck tires, you know, 17s, 18s, 20s, they're almost impossible to get balanced because they're, uh, I mean, the carcass of the tire, you're trying to, you know, balance 80, 90 pounds of tire on a little spindle. I don't think it does a very good job. These beads don't care. The other thing that's really, really nice on these beads if you get a rock, you get mud, you get dirt, you get debris, which happens for my um, ag guys. They're always uh, traveling down dirt roads. There is no way that lead weights or, uh, you know, balance weights is going to compensate for that. It's impossible. It's a static weight. This balances perfectly throughout the life of the tire. So when you're down to 430 seconds, your tire is still balanced. So just depends on what you like. You can put them in, in in a bulk form, which is pretty popular in a tire shop because we go through a lot of them. As a individual, most of your parts store will be able to ca carry these for you. Uh, there's a, yeah, well, this is Impact brand, there's Counteract, there's any number of different brands out there. I'm, this is what I put in my shop. Just make sure that they are a uh, silica glass bead. Don't use... Um, marbles or airsoft beads or um, there's a variety of them out there. there's a lot of sc youtube school of thought and almost all of the negative reviews are because they didn't use the right beads but these are really easy for the homeowner you can either break the bead and put them in or there is a way to run it through your valve stem it's a that's its own youtube video it's much slower definitely the way to go if you're a, you know putting on your own tires at home and it's just that's complicated just Drop it in, your tire is now balanced. So, feed that around, press down. These say 110 PSI, and he actually recommends running that, so. I do. That's what they, uh, to achieve that weight rating from the manufacturer, that's what they tested at. Absolutely. My other ones were 80. Uh, good luck. Two pops for a dollar, they say. Pop! So what's the torque stick? Torque sticks just limits how much horsepower, how horsepower or torque that comes from your your impact gun to your lug nut. They go, I've got them down to I think 70, 70, 80. I think you go up in 10 pound increments. I'm going to use 150. These are good seven eight studs. So we want to make sure we don't have any tires fall off, but you also don't want to make sure you tighten so tight that you can never get them back off or that you strip the studs or you have to, you know, that may have been what happened on one of your other videos. They were on there so tight that they strip the studs, which is, you know, that's a catastrophic failure and that's not good. So you want them 
tight enough where they don't fall off, but not so tight you can't get them back off and causes other damage. Somehow so, that, that extension right there has the limiter built into it? It does. So this particular one's gonna be 150 foot pounds. Huh. And the, like the 80, it's about half that size. It just uses a torque, torque flex is the best way I know to explain it. So you can hit it with uh, 300 pounds of force here, but only 150 pounds is gonna come out here. I could uh, do 80, 90, up to 150 as big as my set goes. Seems impossible, but uh, pretty cool, I guess. It, uh, it works. Um, they're, they're popular because they're fast. In a tire shop, you know, speed's, speed is your friend trying to get your tires in and out because nobody likes to hang out at the tire shop. You got to do it right you got to do it safe and you got to do it every time so this is what we use um, works good um, the alternative would be to come out here with a, a quick type torque wrench and go around the corner and very slow and tedious uh, these are these are checked and they're accurate they don't uh, they don't seem to wear out or fail so i'm gonna go in a across the you know, a star pattern. And then I always like this go around twice. Every once in a while you'll find one that you missed or just one that didn't get tight all the way like it should have. So we'll just go around and them again. There is to it. Beautiful. Okay. This is for the people who didn't believe me that my tires were that out of round and they thought it was something more serious. Not that I know more than you or anything, but this is what we found out. Uh, if this turns true, we know it was just the tire. Looks pretty darn good to me. Let's see how she drives. All right, so I just left the tire shop, driven about two blocks. I already pretty sure the problem's fixed, but as we speed up, I'll give you the same view I gave you earlier. Hopefully this video has been entertaining or helpful or something. And if you ever have a trailer that goes crazy on you, keep in mind it could be something as simple as belts in a tire. And looking at that tire from the outside or the inside, it was not obvious that there were there was a problem with it. But that was very definitely my entire problem. So anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos. And I'll see you next time.